Hey, it's Brussels Lovers. Mark here. I've got Brian with me and Hello. a Proftech Pro 300. We're going to show you what comes in the box, what to expect, how to start this thing up. We're going to get you making a coffee right away and we'll froth a little milk and, you know, show you what the machine's all about and how to use it. So, Brian, uh, tell us real quick what you do here at Whole Lot Taylor. I am the tech manager, so of course you're going to expect me telling you a little bit about cleaning and maintenance on this as well. Yeah, we'll hit that at the end, but let's get this out of the box, show you what it comes with real quick. Alrighty. This one's brand new. Uh, so we got our accessories there, right? Yep, right up on the top. Well, oh, we'll just pull this whole tray right out. There we go. Uh, you take those out, I'll take the drip tray out of here. Cool. Yeah, drip tray grid. I got a... Double spout port of filter, single spout. What you got there? Tamper. A little prop tech tamper, nice. Nice. We use that over here in a minute when we make a coffee. A little cleaning brush. Mm -hmm. And back flushing desk. And of course the uh, the manual here. Fantastic. Um, so we'll set that aside now, get this out of the way, and let's get this machine out of here. Alrighty. Gonna Ooh. come fairly well packed here. We take out this little foam thing. Yep. Perfect. And oh, I'm I'm getting heavy on today, I see. Ah, oh, you know. There we go. I try to be nice <laughs> to you, but there we go. Did they wrap up? Yep, they did the, so you often see that when you take the machine out, the little cord wrapped around the cord. That's yep. Work. Rip cord around the plug cord. Make that Beautiful. Up. Get our drip. Oh, there it's it got is. the little slot right here. This little hole right here is for your back flush disc. If you want to set that in there. Perfect. Well, let's get some water in this. If you want to grab the water, we'll talk in a minute about water quality. If you want to start pouring. Yeah. First things first, make sure it's all the way filled up. Don't want to interrupt your uh, filling cycle. I always like to keep the machine unplugged when I first fill, fill it up, mm -hmm. just in case, never know. Oh, there are we, about a quarter of the way here. Round two. Like I say, we will go through, you know, we'll, show you, we'll take you on a tour of the machine here, but we do just want to get this one heating up. We do have, as you saw, another one here that's already heated up. It's like those cooking shows, right, where you take it out of the oven, <laughs> already done. Yep. Because we just want to get you making a coffee and a latte right away, show you how that takes place, give you some advice on how to do that. All right, I'm ready to plug her in. There we go. We want to leave this off because we yep. want to watch the water go down, right? Yep, definitely. Make sure the water's actually going down in there. All right. So, got a few switches up here. Got this one all the way to the left is going to be your main power switch. Flip that on first. Make sure my valves are closed. You'll see the fill message appear on the front. That's because this being a dual boiler machine, we've got a brew boiler up towards the front that doesn't have a liquid level control system. So it wants to make sure that you actually run water through it before it allows it to start heating. Going down. And so you're kind of checking back there to make sure that the water level is going down, right? Yep. Yeah. When machines have been drained and shipped, it's not uncommon for you to experience what's called vapor lock in the pump, and that's where it's just a little air in there instead of water. Pumps move water way better than they move air, so it just kind of seizes up a little bit. Uh, if you experience it, the best way to resolve it is just to lift up on that reservoir a little bit and plop it down. Okay. Uh, obviously, I didn't have that issue here. Uh, what I'm going to do is start... Start up here, I'm going <laughs> to uh, run water out of the group head. So to clear this fill code, I need to run yep. that group for 30 seconds. All right, now we already got water coming out of here. Uh, get a cup over there just so we don't overflow our drip tray. Uh, got, a, got a smaller one here. That'll work. Just catch that I just don't want to interrupt this uh, cycle. I want to make sure that it hits at least 30 seconds. I always say go to uh, 31, 32 seconds just to make sure. Uh, that's what's going to clear the code. If you stop it before it hits 30 seconds, it won't clear that code. So hit the bruise switch? I don't know why I keep yeah. wanting to go down there. <laughs> okay, so now the machine is going to heat up, right? Yeah, well, almost. Well, brew boiler is going to heat up. If we okay. want both to heat up, we got to make sure we hit this 
right side switch right here. That's going to activate the steam boiler. For the steam boiler. Yep. But let's get you over. Let's go over to our heated up machine. Now, this machine, one of the really nice features is it heats up really quick, right? Yeah. Um, so we do like that. But we do have this one all ready to go. And I want to show you, I want to get, get, get you making an espresso, and then we'll make a latte right after that. Sounds good um, to me. So I've got, I've got a couple things here. I've got, number one, keeping the port filter in the group head to warm that up. That's part of you know, keeping things hot, right? And you yep. gotta, it is going to be nice and warm. Um, I like to start with a dry port filter. So I got a rag over here. I'm just going to wipe that out because there usually will be a little condensation in there. Perfectly and I'm going to use the double shot basket here, about 17 grams in capacity. Now I'm going to use a scale. You don't have to use a scale. You can get by without it. We, you know, you're probably going to have more consistent results if you do use a scale, but I'll show yep. you how to make one without that. So I'm using this Eureka Mignon Libra grinder here. Now we dialed this in earlier. Uh, I've got a lot of great videos on how to dial in your coffee to get the grind right. Yeah. right? Um, so this one grinds by weight. I really like this grinder. But I'll show you what it looks like in the porta filter so you can duplicate that. So I just hit this. It automatically tears um, and grinds me out 17 grams. Love it. I'm also using a dosing ring you can see here which just helps keep things a little cleaner. And it's just bumping it right to that 17. So well, the nice thing about the Libra is that it uh, removes the need to have a scale for at least that first half of uh, having a ratio there, right? Yeah. So you already so know I'll, what you got going in. So I'll show you what that 17 looks like in there. And it's just, it's almost level with the top. And I'm using the double shot basket. So I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to swipe it in a little bit. So if you didn't have a thing to weigh, you would just fill it completely and then maybe swipe your finger. And I'm going to go right on the floor here just because I can. <laughs> And just maybe give it a little dip right here. And that'll get you what you need. So I'm almost level at the top. I'm going to take over here. I've got this little tamping pad. Um, and I'm going to use the, the tamper that came with it. And we're going to tamp it nice and even, right? We want it nice and flat and firm. Yep. And I'm just going to what we call polish it a little bit. Do you polish? Not I do, polishes. yeah. Yep. So that's just twisting the, the head a little bit here, but gave it a nice firm push. Um, now, this is a dual boiler machine, so the temperatures are very consistent, so you generally don't have to do a cooling flush. Some people will anyways, and that can help clean your group. That's just giving it one of these, like that, to clean stuff off. I'm yep. not going to do that. Um, if you were using a scale, again, you don't have to. I'll show you what the liquid volume in this is going to look like. I, if you don't have a scale, you really want to have a cup like this. Definitely helps. Um, so I'm going to use this scale for this. Again, you don't have to do that to get going. Make sure we're tearing it out there. And I'm looking for 20 to 30 seconds at a 1 to 2 ratio. So we use 17 grams about in the port filter. So we want about 34 out. Yep. Right? So we'll just hit the brew switch. And I'm brewing a coffee that produces a lot of creme. And I get a lot of questions about, if I'm using a liquid volume, you know, how come, you know, shouldn't, it, shouldn't 34 grams weight be 34 milliliters? And no, because <laughs> look at all the creme in this coffee. So I'm going to stop this right there, we're at a little over at 34, and our, our time's a little under. So that's a grind I'd want to fine up a little bit. Now, when I dialed this in, I was using that straight 17, and I did scrape a little bit off. Yep. But that's where, that's where that volume looks like when you pull that shot. So with the creme, I'm at like 50 milliliters here. And when the shot first finished, it was probably a little bit higher than that, because that comes down a little bit. So if you want to give that a taste, and I absolutely tell do. me what you think. And I'm going to get this out of here. We're getting ready. We're going to make you a latte now. Ah, came up excellent. Excellent? Yeah. Not, not too under? I need, no, no. Okay. And I think, you know, the important thing to remember is not hitting exact times and all that. It's what tastes good to you. Exactly. So if you had it at 20 seconds and, you know, the taste wasn't quite what you expected, you know, try it a little longer. Try a little, you know, finer grind and see if it gets the taste where you like it. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Um, Half the fun is experimenting. So let's do a latte, right? You're going to froth. Yeah. And I'm going to set, set up our next shot here. I won't do finish that. that shot, so I'm not too jittery. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I did, I got the milk out for you there in a frothing awesome. pitcher. Get a quick purge of my wand. Not uncommon to have a little bit of condensation come out of there. Especially if you've been letting it sit for a while. So again, I don't know if, uh, yeah, I guess we can see that. So again, that's that's 17 grams in there. I'm going to try and keep that whole 17 in here. 
this time and see if we, our shot doesn't come a little bit longer because we put more coffee in a porta filter. It's going to take the shot will take a little bit longer to extract at the same grind size. And I get this is a dual boiler machine, so you can brew and steam at the same time. And I've got Brian helping out with that, so thanks. That's looking good. I often swipe the top here to get rid of any coffee grounds around the top if there are any. And let's see, we're going to go into this guy, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Okay. I like going to the clear ones. I like being able to see what's going on. All right. I'm very visual. So you do right. your thing and I'll do mine. Let's do it. And I'm not weighing it at all this time. Again, you don't have to do that. It's just if you get consistent, you'll get to know what you like flavor wise. So I'm just going to watch the time. And this one does look like it's coming a little bit slower because I probably swiped out maybe half a gram in the first one. And where are we at? 18. I'm going to just let this go. It's looking like it should hit right about 25. And we'll leave that. And a lot of steam pressure on this. We'll talk more about that, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, a couple things. A little you advice do. on uh, what, what you're seeing on this machine versus what you'll see on the other machine when it's done heating up. Uh, the gauges are going to look a little bit different, and that's just because uh, we may have played with this one a little bit. So. <laughs> Which you can do, right? Absolutely, yep. All right, let's see what we got here. And you're just you're just combining that into you know more of a, a latte style drink, but it's pretty heavy. Yep. And it depends on you know when you're making a drink like oh, this depends on what oh, you like. Oh, oh. Okay, <laughs> I can't do any more designing. Okay. Oh, meniscus, <laughs> meniscus. <laughs> Too many jitters. There you go. How's Perfect. It taste? Tastes, tastes good. good. Yep. Yeah. Tastes like a latte. Now, that, now that's a double <laughs> shot in a short glass, so that's I. I be like, you know, you're kind of, doing, you know, if you want to pour a little more foam on top or something, kind of like a flat whitish size. Yeah. That kind of thing. So, but let's talk about, uh, well, we'll go look over here, right? And we'll talk about uh, what you have on the machine, what everything does. So you just want to kind of start at the top, we'll work our way down, right? Yeah, let's do that. All right, so we got your steam valve right over here. And you can see, it doesn't take a lot of turning to get it open. You got about a quarter rotation from completely mm -hmm. shut. Uh, two hole tip, right? Yep, two hole tip. No burn wand. No burn wand. Still got the rubber there just in case, but mm -hmm. yep, definitely safe fire up here. Okay. Over on this side, we've got our hot water tap. I'll use that to rinse out my milk yeah. pitcher a little bit there. So this, Swear if you're going to make an out. Americano or something? Yep, this is uh, unmixed straight out of the steam boiler, so that's going to be at what? Uh, you know, probably about 240 degrees temperature, so maybe a little hot for Americanos unless you like them really, really hot. Yeah. Uh, but I'd like to go like if I'm going to do that, I'll I'll put my water into a really cold cup first, let that sit while I'm prepping everything, and by that time it's yep. usually cooled up. Hot, and that's, cooled that's up honestly, in my personal opinion, is the best way to do an Americano anyway. Shots yeah. should always go on top. You shouldn't yep. mix them together. Um, so the brew switch, right? Yep, got a brew switch right here. So you have a little few uh, indicator lights. Mm -hmm. uh, this green one right here is just indicating that we have power to the machine that comes on when we flip the main power switch. Mm -hmm. You've got the amber one right here with a little vapor logo there. That's indicating that we have the steam boiler activated. So you can turn that off. You don't have to have that on if you're just yeah. doing shots. If yeah, that's, right? that's really nice to have because you don't always want to make a latte. You know, if you're like my household where I'm typically just espresso, my wife's mm -hmm. more of the latte drinker. So if it's just me in the morning, I'm just going to turn on the yeah, not bother heating up the, the uh, other boiler. Yeah, right? exactly. Save, save a couple pennies. We'll come back to the PID here. What's this little button right there? That little button right there is our discharge. So this machine has a solenoid valve that is activating to allow water through the system. Uh, once you have that pressure in the system from the coffee puck, that excess pressure needs to go somewhere once you turn it, uh, stop brewing. Mm -hmm. uh, that goes down a silicone tube, which meets up here, and ends up in the drip tray. Exactly. And then, now we mentioned the, uh, again, we'll come back to the PID, we mentioned the uh, pressure gauge here, that's for the service boiler, which creates the steam. Yep, exactly. So, as you can see right here, we have it at one bar. This is mm -hmm. out of the box. Mm -hmm. uh, see that there a little bit better? Yep. There you go. Uh, so one bar out of the box is, about, is what you're gonna see typically. Yeah. Uh, like we mentioned on the one over here, uh, we're up at about two bar, right? Yep. Uh, so two. the 
Service boiler in this machine actually has a safety that is rated over two bar. Uh, and through a little bit of experimenting, we found that we can safely get it up to two bar mm -hmm. and be okay. Uh, don't recommend going any higher than that because then, you know, it's excess wear on the boiler and you may blow off your safety. But yeah. if you want that extra power, this machine can get up to two bar, which is really awesome. And like I said, this machine does heat up quickly. I mean, we're, we're fully up to temp, right, in the time we take yeah. did an espresso and a latte over here. And yeah. like I always say, I mean, it's, it's not as not hot quite. yet, so it's got a few yeah. more minutes and we'll be there. Yeah. Um, but that's my, my tip is always to see if you're at that good temperature to see how hot your porta filter is. Because like we said, we want to make sure that the porta filter is fully heated up so you're not losing any of that right. heat while you're brewing. Probably like 10 to 15, you know, 15 minutes you're going to be, you're going to be there. Right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No yeah. Problem. Okay. All right. So PID, let's talk about the control for that over there. All right, sure thing. So. Getting into the PID is very simple. You've got a plus and a minus button here. If you can see okay there. Yep. If you press those together, you will hop in. Everything tends to change really quickly. You saw how quickly that went away. So you gotta move a little fast. Double tap, T1, this is gonna be your temperature setting. So if I go in and then press up, I can go up and down in temperature. If I leave it, it'll go back to T1. So that's your coffee brewing temperature, just to be clear. Yeah, yep, yeah. yeah. You can't change the temperature of the service boiler through the PID. That right. is just through that uh, pressure stat. Yep. Okay, so tap again, go in. You'll see we have eco. All right, now eco is great function if you want to not have to worry about leaving the machine on for too long. You know, if you have a tendency to walk away uh, mm -hmm. and leave the machine sitting there, you can set it for the intervals of uh, 30, 30 minutes. Up yep. to 10 hours, I believe, 600 minutes, and yep. it, it'll just shut the boilers down. Yeah. yeah, so to go into there, and everything that you do in here is gonna be based on double press to get in, minus is how you scroll through the functions, and then plus is how you get into that said function. So go to eco, press plus. We have it set for 90 minutes right now on eco mode. Go in there, let's say I wanted to turn it off. I go in, up, and down, 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 down. Tilts us off. Oh. Okay. Now after eco, we have CLN. That's clean. That's our cleaning cycles. If you're forgetful, I definitely recommend setting this. Uh, this is for how many brew cycles you're going to do before it tells you, hey, it's time to back flush your machine. We'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Yep. And we'll also be taking questions. If you have some questions, use the chat there. Uh, we got Brian back there who will get those around to us. Sorry to interrupt. Just want to remind people. Hi, Brian. That. <laughs> okay, go ahead, sorry. <laughs> All right, you go back in, past that, past clean is this little dot figure here, that's the degree symbol. You go in there, that's how you choose between Fahrenheit and Celsius. These typically come preset in Fahrenheit. For us here. If, and yep, for us in the States. Yep. Uh, but if you prefer Celsius, that's how you go in there, or if you ever had to do a reset on it, you'll have to change that there as well. But that's it, it gets past there, and you're right back at where you started. It bumps you right out of the PID, so. Beautiful. So uh, one thing I wanted to talk about was, you know, water quality, right? And I don't want to spend a lot of time here, but just, you know, feed the machine with good water. We yeah. use the uh, BWT, a BWT option. There's a couple other ones we'll just cover real quick. Uh, the Penguin Pitcher, and then the newest version of this is the Alkalizer. They, they do exactly the same thing. Um, it does a calcium to magnesium ion exchange, so you won't get scale in your machine if you use it properly. Uh, and I really love this because, you know, you can just fill it up, set it aside, pull it out, fill your machine, and your water's going to be perfect all the time. Won't get scale, and you will have the minerals you need for good flavor, too. Exactly. It's a little better than the, so you know, if you're familiar with sodium softening, uh, that uses salt, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we prefer the magnesium, and it's been shown in testing that the magnesium is just a better flavor extractor and sodium, and you do want some minerals in the machine. I don't want to belabor this point, but don't use RO or distilled water in your machine. It's just not good for it. Right. It's not going to do good taste. Yeah. And then we've got a couple other real quick options that do the same thing. One is a reservoir. Oh, the oh. yes. Yeah, so this is a this is the best save pad filter. This also does the calcium to magnesium. Also has the activated carbon, just like the just like these pitchers do as well. So it'll take care of any chlorination of your water. So that just drops into your reservoir up here so you just take this off and drop it in the one thing about this option is it takes about 8 to 12 hours of residence time in the water you're going to use to actually uh, do the filtration so yeah. if you're going through a lot of water 
this may not be the best option for you. Exactly. Uh, but there is another option that could go in the reservoir that can give you all the water you need. Well, this one's the best cup, right? This one's for parties, right? Yeah. That's <laughs> you just keep going, going, going. So you, yeah, <laughs> hey, it's yeah. holiday season, right? Uh -huh. So if you're planning on entertaining this year and you're going to be making a lot of drinks for folks, yeah. uh, this is a great solution because all you got to do is that it comes with the filter and this little adapter system. Mm -hmm. uh, the filter goes right into the adapter, there's little O-rings in there, just plugs right in like that. And then you take this and you actually just stick it, there's a little suction cup here, mm -hmm. and you stick it to the inside of the reservoir. And this little tube right here connects, there's a little uh, nipple on the bottom of the reservoir. Mm -hmm. It just slides right over that. And then all you have to remember is just to keep filling with your you know, water, with filling your water. So I'm going to shut this off real quick. I just want to because I we should also just talk about that float in here too, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. So I'm just going to dump that out real quick so you get a look. All right. Yeah, the the, the float. Yeah. That sometimes it, it, it doesn't Brian? happen very often. All right. So right down. Oop. Here go here. Right down, down on there. this corner here. So. Yeah, everything's backwards. It's okay. I'm all right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so there's a float in here, and what happens is you add your water, that float goes up, that float has a little magnet on it. There's a sensor inside the back of the machine that that will trigger to let it know that there's enough water in there for the machine to function. Uh, that's always a good thing to check when you first unbox, uh, just because the cap for this set, uh, float is just held in there statically as it just pushes into place. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is possible for it to pop out during shipping. So if you see a little piece of plastic floating in there, that's what that is. Just make sure you put them back in with a magnet facing towards the inside of the machine, slide the cap back on, and you're ready to go. Awesome. Um, and let's, we'll talk, uh, I'll just check for any questions. Yeah, okay. Um, we, do want, I, we do want to give a like, a, we'll take one question, and if we got some more, we can do some more, but do want to just really quickly cover back flushing after we take this first Absolutely. one. Let's get into it. Yeah, no problem. Uh, right here, uh, someone was asking, can you put any 58 millimeter portafilter into this machine, or does it take specific ones? Like E61, it's a type of portafilters, yes? Yeah, yeah. The, I, I will loosely say yes, but it's always better to check with the specific ones because, um, the, not the easiest to show, but sorry for the puddle. Um, <laughs> You have these guys right here, all right? These are called the wings of the portafilter, and there are different designs of them as far as how thick they are, how long they are, the edging of them, like the how sharp of a degree it is. Mm -hmm. So there are some different designs that won't necessarily fit. In general, they'll fit on there. They just won't always clock right mm -hmm. uh, and potentially not have a, a, as good of a seal without introducing you know, like a shim underneath your group gasket or something like that. So that's a kind of yes, but always safest to double check first. Yeah. I mean, definitely if they're, if they're offset, if you have those, yeah. they're not going to work at all. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So if you offset, look at, uh, yeah, like the, uh, the BZ groups, uh, yeah. the Pro 800 has a uh, angled Mm -hmm. wings just like the BZ group does so you couldn't use a 800 port of filter on the Pro 700. And you mentioned clock. Yeah. So something else is going to happen when you get a brand new machine is it might not go right to six o'clock and yep. that's you know six o'clock would be you know directly out like this and that's the case here right? Exactly yep and all that is is that there, like I said there's the group gasket this inside the group here that creates the seal between the group head and the port of filter. Uh, that needs to break in, just like mm -hmm. any rubber seal in your vehicle or anything like that. It's just going to break in time. Uh, after a while of use, I uh, can't really tell you exactly how much use because everybody's use is different. Right. But uh, eventually it will get over to your 6 o'clock clocking, uh, which is great. in there. Yeah, yep. wants to put a little break in, right? Yeah. And that's, that, that gasket is a wear part, you know, some months down the road or maybe a year, depending on your use. Yeah, maybe and that's longer. especially important on E61 machines because if yeah. it starts clocking over yeah. <laughs> here too far, then it's going to block your lever from going up. Yep. So there you go. <laughs> so let's talk real quick just about, you know, the basic maintenance, which is, you know, some back flushing, right? Yep, back flushing and boiler refreshing, my yes. favorite topics. <laughs> um, so you've got... And I emptied this one, so we're not going to be able to do it here, right? Well, that's perfect, because this one's going to need to be yeah. cleaned, right? Yep. We'll see. All 
right. And I should have, you know, always, I left that port filter in there because we're doing the video. You should always take that out and dump it as soon as you can. He's grounded. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell my mom. <laughs> All right, so let's do a real quick flush just to get any of the particles off the screen there. Uh, I grabbed our blind disc from the new machine. Mm -hmm. uh, show you a little trick of the trade here. Uh, get the basket off the portafilter. You just take the lip of your blind disc or any other basket will work and just get it under the edge and twist and it'll lift it up enough that you can pop that right out. And then you just take blind disc, pop it right in. And then we're gonna take our Kafiza. Any giant bottle of Kafiza, this thing will last you a very long brush. time. Oh, so I yep. do love this Thank brush. You. Yeah. There you go, a little scoops brush, yep. also made by Urnex, who makes the Kafiza. You could always eyeball, just you know, sprinkle some in, but having a little scoop is a great idea. I think they recommend two scoops, but we clean this often enough that I'm not going to use a full two scoops. I'm just going to use one. Um, this is more important on E61s because there's a lot of uh, valves inside the group mm -hmm. head that you don't want to uh, get the lubrication off of. Uh, less of an issue on this ring style group because you don't have those valves there. You have, like we said before, you have the solenoid in the back. So. And back in that clean setting, the machine could alert you with a certain number of cycles. What, how many cycles do we like on a machine like this? Uh, I'd say probably about 100. About 100? Yeah. yeah. would be a good, good number. And the process is? Process is super simple. Go 10, 10, 10, just like with the 61s. Not, mm -hmm. not going to change anything there. All you do is, once you have it locked into place, obviously, so we're going to lift it up. And you're going to let this pump run for 10 seconds. What it's doing is introducing the water and mixing up the solution so that it's no longer granular and it starts getting all sudsy. And we'll all see right. some exhaust here, right? Yep. Keep an eye right here. And you see how that came out a little foamy, almost mm -hmm. like a little, little milk texture there. All right. So now we're at our second 10. We're mm -hmm. waiting 10 seconds. I'm not going to do the full 10 seconds yeah. because you know, ahead who wants to radio. see that? Yeah. But uh, the more you do this, you'll see more white foam coming out, and you should start seeing uh, more of a coffee color because it's getting those coffee oils cleaned out. Now, our, our machine looked fairly clean. I mean, yeah, I'm not seeing a yeah, lot Yeah, like there. I said, we take pretty good we care do. of the machine, so you're not really going to see that. Yeah. Um, whoop. Don't know my own strength yeah. here. Uh, but you, as you can see, you've got a bit of coffee buildup in there, so we're just going to rinse that out real quick. Uh, it's the second part of it is just get this rinsed out, get the group rinsed out there, and then you're just going to do the same thing with no cleaner in there, and just do that until you stop seeing the suds come out and it's just straight water. That way you know everything's completely rinsed out. And the number of back flushes with the cleaner in there, how many times would you repeat that 10, 10, 10? Uh, if you're doing it religiously and you're mm -hmm. making sure that you're flushing your group after every use, uh, you should expect to have to do it probably three or four times. Okay. Um, but if you always see a lot use, of stuff coming yeah, out, Yeah, always, going, always right? use what you see coming out of that uh, tube there as your reference. You know, mm -hmm. if, it, if it's still coming out pretty grungy looking, if it's been a long time, uh, you're always welcome to empty Go it out and put a little bit extra little of the more. cleanser in there just to make sure it's really clean. Um, but yeah, that's that's the best trick is just to make sure that you're running it until it's coming out clean. Now this mentioned the other end of the scoops brush is kind of like a group brush. Yep. Which one did come with the machine, right? Yes. Yeah. So this one has it right on it and that's to get up in here and you can use the cleaner on here to clean up the group and stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because coffee gets trapped, little grounds get trapped up in there, it can actually act as sandpaper in the group kind of over time. Yep, exactly. You know, a little wear and tear on their seal there. Mm -hmm. um, that That's a trickier spot to uh, get. What I recommend, and I'm glad you brought it up because I didn't yeah. think about it before, uh, when you have your portafilter with that sudsy water in there, just, use, just that. use that and go like that to clean it. Mm -hmm. Just rinse and scrub. And then you do the same thing, rinse off the brush and use fresh water just to rinse that off. Um, I see people doing the, putting it kind of on there. Okay. Don't, don't do don't that. Do that. So, yeah, okay. you, could, you could burn yourself, so don't do that. Yeah. Um, a good solution, if you don't want to do it this way, is you could use uh, like a clean, because it has the uh, oh, spray bottle. Spray bottle? Uh, that, that's yeah. what I like to do, is a little spritz yeah. up there, get it nice and clean, wipe it down, and then just run I a lever and I know you like it. your clean. I do, I do. <laughs> 
All right. Well, uh, make another check for. Yeah, we got some more questions. Great. Uh, let's see here. Arash wanted to know how long does the best save uh, last? How lo how long is that still good for? Um, so it's it depends on which one you're using, and it also depends on uh, not so much for the pitchers, but for the other ones, your source water hardness. Um, it should have it should indicate on there. Um, I know you know like it's a number of lead. I, well, there is a best cup over there that has that has I think a the yeah. Gives you some, some leader indication, if you can see, or maybe inside. Um, I believe for the pad filters, I think depending on water hardness, you're, you know, you're in the 50 to 75 uh, liters anyway. So that would be, you know, a machine like this, you're going to be able to fill it, you know, 40 times anyways. Yeah. Uh, let's see. It doesn't say volume. It says uh, two to three months. Two to three months. Yeah. Yeah. So that's got to be like average use, two to three months. Um, so there. Um, any any more? Okay, shoot. Uh, yeah, uh, Critter wanted to know what are the main benefits of this machine over the Gaja Classic Evo Pro. Over the Gaja, so you want me to? Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean it's. Uh, you, you go for it. Both yeah. are fantastic machines. Uh, the big difference is kind of their a apples to oranges here. Yeah. Because this is going to be a dual boiler machine, where the Gaja Classic Pro is a single boiler machine. Mm -hmm. uh, on that machine, you'd be looking at you have to switch, kind of like flipping the switch every time you want to switch from being able to brew to being able to steam. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's just a little stagger time you have to work into a special workflow to be able to make a latte. Yeah. Uh, whereas with this machine, you just have both boilers set to on and you can, as we demonstrated, brew and steam at the same time. So that's, yeah. that's gonna be the biggest difference. Yeah, and after steaming like on a single boiler, there's a you know, refill cool down the boiler you know, before you make your next shot. So a little, little more process involved there. Of course, this is a PID machine which is going to give you temperature stability that's like this on a Gaja Classic Evo. You know, you can get temperature stability if, you, yeah. if you're using it properly, but it is going to do more of, I call it the wave, right? Right, um, yeah. Of course, you got the, uh, you know, and you're, the ability to set the temperature that you want here. Exactly. You, know, you can surf a Classic and get, you know, get in the ballpark there, and, you know, that's fine for a lot of people. But if you're going to be doing, like, high-end specialty coffees, you know, if you're, you got a really light roast, you want to do it at 203, 204, you can do that. If you're going to be doing more, most, mostly dark, you know, maybe you're 198, 197, mm -hmm. you know, depending on the coffee. And of course, um, you got the shot timer on this one, um, and that stability. You know, larger surface up here for cup warming. This gets nice and warm up here. It does, yeah. Because that boiler's like right there. Right there, <laughs> so, yep. So I think, you know, those are some major differences. Yeah. Um, any more? Okay. Maybe we'll take, we'll do two more. How about that? Uh, yeah, let's just get one real quick. I, okay. I, 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 I'm I, sorry because I don't know if you guys know the answer to this, oh, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> do we sell uh, the wood knobs and the port filter separately, or do you have to get the whole set? I'm pretty darn sure that you can, you can, oh, like individual ones? Oh, well, yeah. I'm assuming they mean like not already attached, you, you can't get it uh, bundled with the machine. Yes, you can get it bundled with the machine, yeah. but can I buy this machine and then a year later I want to put the wood accents on, I'm assuming is what the question is. Um, I believe so. I'm not positive, but I believe we can. Uh, the thing to keep in mind with that is that uh, changing out the handles is mm -hmm. tricky. <laughs> uh, we actually just did it on a uh, machine right before this uh, live stream, and uh, it takes some convincing. So yeah. uh, if it's something that you're looking into doing, I would recommend buying it as a pre-assembled port of filter unless you feel like getting really hands-on with swapping those Although out. I know some of the, you know, like on some of the ECM machines are going to like... The newer ones, easy, yeah. Yeah, easier switchable yeah. for the wood components because they become so popular to really customize your machine. Yeah. Uh, any, any more? Are we good? Yeah, let's 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 get one more here. Okay, uh, awesome. Adrian just got this one in. Uh, can the firmware on the PID be updated if you if there's an older version that you have? I'm gonna. Look. The uh, no, you can replace the PID with one that has the update, but we don't have a upgrader for this PID. There are some some of the boards on some of the PropTech ECM machines that we are able to do that with, but it's not, we don't have a programmer for the PID themselves. 
So it's usually just switching. I know way back years ago, like the Pro 700 and Synchronica had a, a, a upgrade and it was you mm -hmm. needed to replace the whole. Well, yeah, it's not yeah, real that hard was to do, but no, no. The uh, on those was it was a little bit more labor intensive because you yeah. had to remove the uh, entire boiler oh, to get right. to it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's not a huge project on machines like the Pro 300. Yeah. All right. Well, Brian, thanks so much uh, for being with me today. Absolutely. And taking care of the frothing over there. Appreciate that. And guys, look, if you have any more questions, um, use those comments. We do monitor those. We can get back to you with answers. If you have some questions, so use the, use the regular comments in the video there, especially if you're watching this after the fact. Um, and also, oh, CoffeeCast. Should have mentioned that. Yeah. So that's a really cool thing. Tell us what CoffeeCast is. All right, CoffeeCast is a fantastic one-on-one -on -one live Zoom meeting where you can meet with myself or one of our sales associates. You can talk about pre-sales, post-sales, uh, or if you're talking to me, most like you're talking about troubleshooting. Uh, or just any kind of anything techy, really. Yeah. So uh, fantastic surface. You go right over to our website and just uh, look for Coffee Cast. You schedule a meeting, and in no time you'll be talking to yeah. an expert. Just like a regular, it's kind of like a Zoom meeting. So you yeah, back and just forth. like this. Only we're not relying on Brian to be our uh, middleman. Yeah, right. And it's free. <laughs> exactly. And it's free. So what do you got to lose? All right. Well, listen, Brian. Thanks again. Thank you guys for watching. Um, and, you know, come on back soon for more of the best on everything coffee brought to you by Whole Latte Love.